Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out these amazing hover animations that we have created in Adobe XD. Uh, they look good, they feel good, and they're all for search. So without further ado, let's just get started with this tutorial. Also join my Telegram channel, which is down below in the description. I will highly appreciate it. So to start off, we will start off with a simple artboard. I'll just draw a square artboard. It could be big, small, whatever you like. And in this case, I will be drawing a rectangle, which will be slightly high, of course. Uh, I don't want it to be like a narrow rectangle for sure. Once this is done, I will change the background color of this artboard to a slight gray so that you can see the difference between the white and the gray. I will remove the border from this rectangle. Next thing I'll do is I'll increase the border radius to about say 12 and I think that's fine. I will also select the rectangle and click on the shadow checkbox. Click on it and I will say 12 uh, by 24. You might want to increase it to something, a higher number like 56 or 80. I might do that too. 80 is fine and I reduce the opacity to 15% on the shadow. Looking good. Now I've already gone ahead and set up my text and my icon right here. This icon right here is from a very popular site which I really love to use. It's called Remix Icons and they have a plethora of different styles of icons. Go check it out. Now once this is set up, I will just maybe duplicate the re this rectangle right here, reduce the opacity to something like 8 and 16 or maybe something even lower than that. But for now 8 and 16 is fine. Reduce the opacity to 10% and we have a flatter card right here. That's about it. I will then maybe copy this text over just so that we have a quick text and maybe change the weight of this text or font to regular and increase the opacity to 100. Here I might write down something like UX design, UX design, and we'll be grouping these together, just these individual uh, texts and their rectangles in the background here and making sure that they are in the same position. Perfect. Now what I will do is I'll activate the pen tool by clicking on P and I will create another rectangle right above this previous one right here. Perfect. Amazing. Okay. And that's about it. What I will do is once I've created a rectangle like this above this rectangle here, I'll select both these layers, group eight as well as path nine on top and I'll click on Command Shift M or Control Shift M to mask them. Then of course, bring them to the bottom right here above this, of course, and that's about it. I might just duplicate this UX design again here so that we have a masked element here. And instead of UX, I might write here UI. Perfect. Now that we have everything set up, the next step that we want to do is reduce this mask to uh, this rectangle. So how we will do that is double click on this. And as you can see, the mask group has been selected. Under this, I want you to select path nine. Once you do that, click on enter or press enter on your keyboard. Next thing you will see are these little circles that appear here. Now just hold and, hold and shift these dots from the left to the top here. Now, while you have that selected, hold shift on your keyboard and press the right arrow key. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how many times you have to press the left, right arrow key. And the same with the right side, just put it to the top here. Just align it with these dots and click one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's about it. Now the same thing we will do with this one. So I will just skip the process and just duplicate the same process. Just double click enter and just shift these dots here a little bit. 
Now you have two of these right here. So you will place them behind everything else, right behind this rectangle. So you get this slight 3D look behind this rectangle. So it seems as if it's, you know, um, there's something behind it or there's space behind it, just like this. Now what we'll do is just select everything on the board here and I'll click on Command K or Control K to make this into a component. I'll then click on plus and click hover state on the right here. Now hover state is is the state we will work will we will be working with. So while hover state is selected, uh, go here, double click inside this component, and you'll see these two mask groups. Click on the first mask group, uh, then click on the path right here. Select the path, press enter, and shift these rectangles or these these little circles from the top to the bottom right like this so that now we have this perfect rectangle opened up same thing we will do for mask 9 but in this case we will just shift this mask down a little bit press enter go inside the mask click on path 10 and press enter just shift these circles to the bottom just like so and you should have like a perfect rectangle again looking good now if i click on this go back to default state go to prototype tab on the top left here and here i will make changes to the easing i'll change the easing to ease in out and i'll change the duration to something like 0 0.6 seconds and then press play on the top now if i click just if i just hover over this we we'll see how this uh, all this just floats down like this uh, you can of course improve this design by shifting some elements here and there, maybe changing the shadows and stuff like that. Moving on to our second design, we have this rectangle. I've just placed this rectangle. I'll remove the shadow or anything from it and I'll change the color to a pitch black. You can choose maybe a charcoal gray, but for this experiment, I'll just go with a black. I have again copied an icon here and this text. The icon again is from Remix Icons. And if I click on this, double click on this icon, I will get these options here on the right. I'll click on the shadow and I've already set up a basic shadow here, which is the same color as this uh, right here. So it gives this kind of a neon glowing effect right here. And it looks pretty cool. The next thing that we will be doing is creating four rectangles on the edges here. So one here on the left, uh, the second on the absolute right like this. Uh, the third will be at the bottom, so I'll just rotate this. I'm just copying over these rectangles as well, and I'll just rotate it and align it just like so. And uh, just same thing I will be doing for the top as well. Looking good. Now I'll make sure that all four of these rectangles are in the back behind the black right here. That's about it. And what I will do is just remove the borders as well. I don't want any borders or anything uh, in my way. And uh, what I will be doing is on the left, I will just copy this color right here. So for the colors, we'll be using the same uh, palette, but with just different uh, shades or different colors of that. So different hues, pink here. At the bottom, we might go uh, with um, maybe a, a green or a yellow or something like that. Something like this, yes. On the right, we might go something like a yellow or something like that again. Um, yellow sounds good. Perfect. And on the top, maybe I'll go, I don't know, uh, a blue of sorts, uh, or maybe a light purple like this. And uh, what I will do is select all four of these rectangles to get that intersection effect right here. What I will do is change uh, my blend mode on the right here. I'll click on this and click on multiply and see how th these colors are blending in together. I will just adjust these rectangles so that they overlap completely and the blend will look really good once it really animates. Now to make it appear from the top that I can do two things. I can either reduce the height, but in that way I will not get the timing right. So what I need to do is click on this rectangle on the left and press command D. And if you, if you see the left here, there are two rectangles now, 27 and 23. I'll select both here and I'll click on Command Shift M to mask both of these. Now it's been masked. I will do the same for all four. So com just press Command D, you'll do duplicate it. Select uh, two layers on top and the bottom and say Command Shift M. 
and you'll do the same for both of these as well. Now that you have all of these, uh, you'll find a bunch of masks on the left and that is what we need. If I go to the leftmost rectangle here, if I double click and I just drag the inside rectangle over the mask here and just far away, as far away as possible, I want this to be really far away. Now the second rectangle, I will just double click and I'll send it to the left here. Uh, far away, but slightly less further away from the previous rectangle. So not as far away, but still quite far away. Same I will do with yellow, but this time I will make sure that it is now closer to this rectangle here, but still slightly further away. For the topmost rectangle, I'll just place it right next to this mask right here, not far away at all. That's about it. I'll select everything on screen here and say command K or control K to convert it into a component. Once I've done that, I'll click on this plus icon and click on hover state as usual. While I have hover state selected, so I'll see a bunch of masks on the left now, I'll select each mask and just place these rectangles where they were earlier and nothing else. We don't really need to do anything else. Okay, now that we have all of these rectangles back where they belong, I will also increase the size of this rectangle just a little bit. Just scale it up, hold shift and scale it up. That's about it. And I'll place it in the center, looking good. Now, if I go back to default state, I go to prototype and under this, I'll change it to ease in out as usual and change the timing to about six seconds, 0 0.6 seconds, sorry. And I'll click on this play or default or the de desktop preview uh, option here. And once I hover over this, ooh, see how these are now timed together so that they're appearing at a synchronized time. Looking good, looking really, really good. So for the last experiment, I have a basic rectangle uh, whose border radius is now 500. And you can increase this to as much as you want. I've also reduced the opacity to about 70%. You'll see why in a minute. And it also has a basic shadow of 24 by 99 and it's actually just 5% on the uh, opacity. I'll just duplicate this rectangle and I have saved an orange color here, which is a gradient, uh, and I'll just copy it and paste it. Increase the opacity to 100%. I'll also adjust this gradient to, you know, look uh, lighter on the left and darker on the right. Don't worry, I will be giving the Adobe XD file in the description below. I'll place this right above this and make sure it's slightly smaller than the outermost rectangle. So just like that, looking good. And I'll just align it so that it's eight pixels on all the edges like this. Looking good. I will also change the shadows color to this dark orange that I have on the right. It's now that's too bright. Uh, how about 45% on that? Now that looks much, much better. I've also placed this search and this icon. Again, icon is from Remix Icons and the font I've used is Helvetica Neu Condensed Bold. It's a free font, you can download it off Google Fonts if you want. And once that is done, what I will be doing is creating two circles. So one big circle and another circle which is just the same size, just hold Option or Alt and copy it over. And the first circle here, I will reduce the border. I'll just change the border like this. Make sure that the circle is on the top, just like that. So both the circles are now selected. I'll click on Command G or Control G to group these together. And I'll place them here close like this. Rotate it so that, you know, I, I really can't see this, this first circle. Just, just like that. Perfect. What I will now do is click on this topmost orange rectangle and Click on Command D, Control D to duplicate these. Now, while I have this rectangle selected, I'll select this group, the circle group at the bottom, and I'll press Command Shift M to basically mask this. Now, as you can see, I really cannot see uh, this circle inside this mask group anymore. I might adjust it a little more. Perfect. We will just select everything and I'll click on Command K or Control K to make it a component. And then what I will do is click on this plus icon and press hover state just here. Perfect. Now while hover state is selected over here, what I will do is first of all, select the rectangle in the background, the back, uh, the white rectangle in the background and just shift it to the right like this. Perfect. 
and what I will be doing is also shifting this orange rectangle to the right like this as well. Just close enough. Perfect. The next thing I'll do is go to this mask group, click on this group inside that mask group and click on these two circles. Just select that group and rotate this group like this. Looking good. Now what I want to do is just increase the size of this one big circle, white circle, and just bring it up till the right edge right here. What I want to do is then select the mask, which is this gray outline here. Just hold this rightmost circle and just shift it to the, to the right like this. Looking good. Now what I will do is just click on this search and this magnifying glass and just shift it to the right here so that the search icon is in the orange background and the search I'll double click and say command comma or control comma on the keyboard to just to just hide it and vanish it in a way. Now what I will do is go back to default state, click on prototype, go to easing and go to ease in out and change the duration to 0.6 seconds. That's about it. If I click on this preview button here and just hover over this, ooh, see how good this looks? Honestly, honestly, this looks better than the original which I had created. I hope you liked that video. Go ahead and check out my second channel which is called Also Puni Chavla and I would post every Monday and Thursday on this channel. So subscribe and also like this video if you did and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.